When Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, pass through the host and command the people, saying, prepare you victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. To the Reubenites, to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But ye shall pass before the brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. To the Lord hath given your brethren rest, as he has given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of Jordan toward the sun rising. So far in scripture, you may be seated. Lord Jesus Christ, as I stand before your people to deliver this word, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will maintain this sanctified air, O oh God. Give your servant, O oh God, the, the specific and particular anointing needful for delivery. Pray in the name of Jesus, prepare the hearts of our spirit, O oh God, the ground of our spirit. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to receive, O oh God, with meekness, the word of God that is able to save our souls. Give us grace, Lord, to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Speak, Lord, is our prayer. Speak, Lord, is our prayer. Your servant here. Your servants here. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Thank you for answering. Thank you, Lord. Amen. amen. And amen. The subject that I would like to speak to you from is unusual for me, being as old fashioned as I am. The setback is a set up for a comeback. Come on here. Right now. Yes. Okay. The setback is a setup for a comeback. Oh you want to try that one? The setback is a setup for a comeback. Say it again. The setback is a setup for a comeback. I want to speak today to us that are focus driven, those moving or working towards a goal. You have something or some things you would like to achieve or accomplish by a certain time, or at least within your lifetime. But in your endeavoring, you run into something that we call setbacks. Setbacks are defined in Cambridge University Dictionary as something that happens that delays or prevents a process from developing. Okay. Sometimes those setbacks can make us feel like the direction we're moving in is backwards rather than forward. Anybody relate to what I'm saying? When the setbacks happen, they can definitely throw you off guard and throw you off focus. And ultimately, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself disappointed discouraged, frustrated, and disgusted. My God, right? These emotions mentioned along with the setbacks themselves will bring you to either a real slow crawl or a standstill altogether. What do you do when you consider that at one point you were progressively moving forward, doing exceptionally well, and it even seemed like you were gaining momentum you can almost see the goal you've been working towards. It's in view. It's seemingly in reach. But all of a sudden, out of the blue, up pops a setback or two. 
Now, it's one thing when you're just starting to set goals and make strides to progressively move toward those goals. Once you got your rhythm going and you're seeing progress and you're well on your way, you're not even trying to entertain the thought of a setback. But they do happen. And when they do, you're overwhelmed because you didn't anticipate setbacks. Now, those whose constitutional makeup is strong, they regroup and keep right on going. They don't allow setbacks to stop or block them. But when setbacks seem to be your life story, the impact of one can be devastating. And the same man. In the text, we see Joshua and the children of Israel encountering what I would consider to be a major setback. They've come so far and through so much to get where they are. This Joshua generation, if you will, grew up in the wilderness. They had a totally different mindset from their parents, which by this time were all dead. All they had was faith in God birthed in them by the strong leadership counsel and leadership example of Joshua and Caleb. This Joshua generation was focus driven and were ready to lay claim to the land that was promised to them. It was their land because God said it was. Amen. And they were there to lay claim to it. But there were inhabitants in the land that they were going to have to evict. That's right. There they were, face to face, with a major obstacle, the wall. God addressed the wall. All right. God gave his plan for the elimination of the wall. Okay. Right here, I need to let someone know today that God is addressing your wall. Whatever is blocking you, whatever is hindering you, whomever seems to be blocking your progress, know that God has the plan to eliminate the wall. All right now, thank you, God. The thing for you to do is to acknowledge Him in all your ways. Hallelujah. And He shall direct your path. God gave Joshua the plan. And he was obedient and followed the plan God gave him. And when the walls fell down flat, they were able to go in, but they had to go in fighting. In that battle, God gave them victory. And they were able to lay hold of that part of their promised land. But there was more to obtain. The songwriter said it like this, each victory will help you, some others to win. Yes, sir. Joshua and the Israelites would learn that firsthand. Can you say amen? Amen. Which brings us to our lesson today. Joshua and the children of Israel had come to a place called Ai. Somebody say Ai. Ai. As in Jericho, there were inhabitants there too. They were, according to God, trespassing on private property. All right, all right. Somebody under the sound of my voice needs to understand that you are private property. Wow. Thank you, God. Somebody say with me, I, I am private property. Am private property. I was bought with a price. I was bought with a price. Hallelujah. And I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Who purchased, me. Who purchased me? If you've been born again, you've been bought with a price, and you are not your own. You are God's property. Say it again. I am God's property. I am God's property. Because you are God's property, hallelujah, glory to God, you must remember that you have authority. All right. And with the authority that you have been given as the property of God, when when you open your mouth, heaven aligns with what you have to say. All right, all right. So somebody declare with me again, I am, I am God's private property. God's property. All right, all 
property. No trespassing. No trespassing. Allowed. Allowed. Violators. Violators. Will be prosecuted. Will be prosecuted. To the fullest extent. Y'all don't want me. Glory to God. Next time there is an invasion of your space by anything or everything that's foreign to what God has determined to be in your space, you remember that you have the authority and you have been graced with the ability to clear out the clutter by the authority invested in you by Jesus Christ declare the decree and call it by name and evict it out of your space evict it out of your space evict it out of your life in the powerful name of Jesus I think we ought to practice right now say with me failure I evict you Sickness, I evict you. Poverty, I evict you. Abuse, I evict you. Come on, depression, I evict you. Unemployment, I evict you. Lord have mercy. Everything that has invaded my space, invaded my life, everything and anything that prevents me from being what I was created to be and doing what I was called to do. Today, somebody say today. I serve the eviction notice. Hallelujah. And command you to get out in the name of of Jesus, Lord have mercy. And I don't mean you got 72 hours. I mean you go right now. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hot from the victory at Jericho, Israel was confident that they could wipe out AI too. The Bible tells us Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai. East of Bethel near, amen, Beth Haven was where Ai was located. And when the spies returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or 3,000 men to attack AI. Since there are so few of them, amen, they advised Joshua, don't make all of our people struggle to go on up there. Hallelujah. And the Bible gets us to know that approximately 3,000 warriors were sent, but they were soundly defeated. Yeah. Yep. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town gate as far as the quarries. Yep. And they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. Yep. Well, the Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn of events. And their courage began to melt away. Uh -huh. This was a setback. Yep. And Joshua could not understand for the life of him what was going on. After all, Joshua in no wise expected any defeat. He only expected to win. God had promised that he would be with Joshua wherever he went. So he wasn't expecting anything near a defeat. I can imagine that Joshua was baffled. He didn't understand what's wrong. What went wrong? Or what did I do wrong that put us on the defeated end? How many of us have ever asked God those questions when we encounter setbacks? When things don't go either as we had planned or expected? We know there is no failure in God, so we figure it must be us that failed. But how? How? Having Joshua's full attention, God informs Joshua that there is sin in the camp. Oh, God. Sin? How? Where? Yeah. Here, sin was the cause of the defeat. Uh -huh. Specifically, the sins of greed and disobedience oh, were the cause of the setback. Oh, God. God had left a specific command. Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction That's right. or you yourselves will be completely destroyed That's right. and you will be 
trouble on the camp of Israel. That's right. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought into his treasury. That's right. And the Bible gives us to know that Israel violated the instructions about the things that were set apart for the Lord. A man by the name of Achan, somebody say Achan, Achan. had stolen some of these dedicated things. So the Lord was very angry with the Israelites. Achan was the son of Carmi, a descendant of Simri, son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah. Imagine that. He was a part of the praise tribe. My God. Sometimes there's one in every group that follows along like they're with the program, but in actuality they're not. They are contrary. And by their contrariness, they impede the progress of the whole. My God. When this occurs, something has to happen. Yep. The issue must be addressed yes. because there is no progress, no forward movement possible as long as there are contrary mindsets at hand. That's and right. say, amen. Yes. Before Joshua could resume the battle, Joshua had to get rid of the sin that was in the camp. And the Bible tells us that not only did Joshua rid the camp of the sin, but the sinner himself, right. along with his entire right. family. Right. Somebody say, you got to clear out the club. You got to clear it out. Hallelujah. After the issue of sin had been dealt with, now it was time to resume the battle. And the scriptures tell us that the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all your fighting men and attack Ai. For I have given you the king of Ai. Lord. I've given you his people. I've given you his town. And I've given you his land. Lord have mercy. You will destroy them as you destroy Jericho and his king. But this time you may keep the plunder. And the livestock for yourselves. All right, all right. Set an ambush behind the town against them. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes. As I bring this message to a close, there are three things that I would like to suggest to you when setbacks come. Right. The first thing that I want you to do is revisit the instructions. Right. Revisit the instructions. Right. Revisit the original plan. Make sure that you got it right in the first place. Right. Check in with God. Make sure you're on point. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're moving in the right direction and in God's timing. All right, all right. And I have to bring that verse back. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord yes. with all your heart. Oh, Come on. And, and lean not unto your, your own, own understanding. understanding. Ah, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and then he shall direct your path. Amen. Hallelujah. So revisit the instructions. Amen. And then the next thing that I would advise you to do is to get rid of Achan in your life. Whatever or whomever is either hindering, preventing, or slowing you down from laying hold on what's yours or keeping you from becoming the you that you are supposed to be, lose them and lose them in a hurry. It's yes. not worth it to hold on to them because destiny is calling you. Yes, Lord. Come on, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The final thing that I want you to know, hallelujah, is that the setback can be a blessing rather than a curse. All right. All right. It can be a set up by God yes. to propel you right into the place you need to be Thank you, Lord. right into your destiny. Yes, Lord. So it was here that I thought about the bow and the arrow. Mm. You are the arrow mm -hmm. and the setback in this case can be the bow. All right. And I have learned in archery that an arrow can only be shot by pulling it backwards. All right. All right. Come on now. Now, the further you pull the ball back, the further 
the arrow will shoot. Right. So when life is producing setbacks, it only means that it's going to shoot you further into something great and greater than where you are now. So the bow may be being pulled back, but don't worry about that because it's where you, the arrow, are going once it's released. Yeah, somebody give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. So with that knowledge under my belt, I will take a different position when there is a setback. I will trust God because somehow, and I, I don't know how, but somehow God is going to work together all of this for good. Oh, y'all not going to help me. Even the setback is going to work for good because I love him and am the call according to his purpose. I might tell the Lord thank you. So, amen, I just want you to let all your haters know that you might have been pressed on every side by troubles, but you're not crushed. You might have been perplexed sometimes, but you haven't been driven to despair. Sometimes you might have been hunted down, but you've never been abandoned by God. I get knocked down sometimes, but I'm not destroyed because in spite of all that I've been through, I'm still here. Somebody say yes. I might have been or might have to be off the scene for a minute, but don't count me out. I shall return. Remember what I look like before. Because that's not who you going to see when I come back. Somebody say yes. Because when I come back, I won't look like what I've been through. I'll be stronger. I'll be wiser. And I'll be better. Somebody say yes. Say yes. The words of the late uh, Bishop Charles Price Jones uh, in his hymn, uh, Happy Day at Hand, uh, he penned these words. Uh, Though at AI uh, come defeat, hallelujah, and reproach upon us be, praise the Lord, we will search the camp for sin. Hallelujah. And then renew the fight again. Praise the Lord. I'll be back. And when I come back, I'll be better than I've ever been. Somebody say yes. Say yes. Say yes. So though the conquest lies ahead, we're going to conquer to dread all the land our feet shall tread praise the Lord is there anybody here that's ready to go forward is there anybody here that's ready to lay hold on what belongs to you is there anybody here that's tired of fighting tired of resisting tired of rebellion you're willing to submit uh, and say yes Lord uh, yes Lord uh, to your will uh, yes Lord uh, to your way uh, yes Lord uh, to your word uh, Lord uh, have your way uh, if it's a setback uh, have your way uh, if it's a setup uh, have your way uh, whatever uh, you have chosen to do uh, however uh, you've chosen to do Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Thank God for the setback. It's my setup. God's got something greater. God's got something better. And I'm going to get it. Tell somebody you better go get it. You better, you better go get it. Dry your eyes. Fix your face. Get your attitude together. Hallelujah. You got places to go. People to see. Territory to get. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And at this point in time, I've got to make it. Is there anybody here on the same page? I mean, I got to make it. I mean, I've been still long enough. I've been crying long enough. I've been upset long enough. Discouraged long enough. Entertaining depression long enough. I've been doing all of that long enough. It's time for a change. Oh my God. And I thank God for sending this word of liberty into this place on today. For if you were bound by a setback, hallelujah.